and the topic is accounting for professional firms. Now, um, what is a professional firm? First of all, a professional firm basically refers to any uh, firm uh, which uh, offer professional services now to its clients or basically to uh, its customers. A good example of a professional firm is something like what? Is something like uh, an audit firm, something like uh, a raw firm, or even what you refer as an accounting firm. So all these particular firms they offer professional services to their what to their clients and basically by the end of the day once they offer those particular services they charge a fee they charge a fee that fee which is charged uh, by these particular professional firms is actually one of the main source of the income uh, because a professional firm may be having other sources of what of income so therefore it is important here to note that a professional firm uh, a professional uh, firm is uh, basically that particular uh, firm uh, which offer is a firm uh, offering, which is a firm uh, offering uh, professional services, professional services, uh, e.g. Uh, auditing, e.g. auditing, e.g. Uh, accounting, accounting, and maybe what you find is the tax word services to it clients uh, to its clients. And basically what you have seen is that once this uh, professional firm has offered this particular uh, services, by the end of the day, it charge a fee. It charge a fee. And that fee is basically the main source of work of income. So mean that assuming we have a, a certain professional firm here, a, a certain professional firm, e.g. maybe a raw firm, an auditing firm or something like that, uh, basically, it will be having a number of uh, clients here. It will be having a, a number of uh, clients. So this uh, firm do what? Offer professional services, uh, services to these uh, clients. And by the end of the day, it will charge a fee. Uh, this particular fees, uh, which is charged, we have said is a uh, one of the income. So therefore, this particular fee, uh, fee charged in other terms, uh, the fees uh, charged in other terms you also refer to it as the cost and uh, the cost what uh, we can say is the cost incurred uh, by this particular professional firm in terms of uh, providing uh, those particular professional good uh, professional uh, services now um a professional firm <coughs> uh, basically at the end of each financial year must prepare the financial statement of which now that is basically a, a normal Mm -hmm. uh, a normal what a normal practice for all business organizations any business organization at the end of the year it has to prepare its financial statement basically for it to assess its uh, financial performance and also to assess its financial what uh, position so therefore uh, a professional firm just like any other uh, business entity uh, prepare financial statements uh, to assess uh, how it performed in a given financial year and also uh, to assess its financial good, its financial uh, position. Now, before we look on uh, uh, how, or basically before you look on the financial statements which are prepared in the, by these uh, professional firms, uh, we can first of all define a number of terms. Uh, we can look on definition of uh, various terms uh, which you are going to come across uh, during the preparation of these uh, financial statements by professional firms. So one of the terms uh, maybe you need to understand is something called uh, the cost uh, incurred, the cost incurred, or in other terms, uh, what you find is the fees, uh, the fees uh, charged. Now, what is the uh, cost incurred, or what do you mean by uh, <clears throat> What do you mean by cost incurred or basically the fees charged? Remember what you have said is that assuming we have this professional firm like a raw firm or audit firm, uh, which is offering services to various uh, clients, various clients. So we have said that this uh, professional firm by the end of the day, it incurs some cost in terms of providing those services. And the cost with which will be incurred is uh, basically what now the professional firm will need to charge to them. Uh, to the current. Uh, once, uh, for example, you have a professional firm, like assuming you have completed your CPA, you may decide to, uh, to do what? To start uh, an accounting firm. 
uh, whereby you'll be offering various services maybe to your uh, to your to your customers like the tax services filing the tax returns the bookkeeping services and, and and so on so once you have provided those services by the end of the day you you send an invoice you invoice your current requesting your current now to pay for the services you have done what you have uh, you have uh, provided so therefore uh, the fees charged the cost uh, incurred basically this is an income uh, to a, a professional firm and it represents the fees uh, which has been charged to the client as a result of the services provided to him or 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 her so the other term uh, basically we shall come across during the preparation of this uh, financial uh, statement is uh, something called a uh, work in progress work uh, in what in progress work in progress when we talk about the work in uh, progress uh, basically this refers to a uh, work uh, which is being undertaken or the services which are being provided by a professional firm but uh, which are not yet completed the services have not yet been completed when the year is coming to uh, to the end of the year like maybe let us assume we have um, a law firm uh, which has been uh, uh, picked by a certain uh, clients or maybe let us assume that you have uh, a case in a court of law and maybe you have picked a lawyer or maybe a certain law firm to be able to uh, to uh, represent you uh, in court, to be able to represent you. So definitely, if uh, the case has not been completed or the ruling of that case has not been delivered at the end of the year, in most of the cases, uh, that uh, law firm will not have uh, requested you to pay the full amount. So therefore, uh, such case uh, which has already been uh, started or which is still going on in a court of law because it is not yet completed the work has not been completed by the law firm we refer to that as work in progress equally if for example you are providing any other professional services like maybe you are uh, you are doing some uh you are auditing the books of accounts the financial statement maybe on behalf of your uh, current or for your current you have not completed that work uh, at the end of the year we refer to that as work in progress work in what in progress so therefore uh, that what you mean by work in what in progress the other term maybe we can be likely to come across here is something called disbursement this uh, basement disbursement on a current behalf on current behalf so when talk about disbursement on current behalf this is any payment is any payment a payment made payment made by a professional firm by a professional firm on client's behalf on client's uh, behalf is a payment uh, which is made by a professional firm on client's behalf on client's behalf so like maybe let us assume uh, a law firm uh, has made a payment on behalf of the client. So what that means is that that law firm, by the end of the day, will be claiming or will be will recover that amount of money from the client. So therefore, a disbursement on client behalf to a professional firm, this is actually uh, treated as an asset. Is treated as an asset. Is whereby, for example, you make a payment on my behalf. Uh, once you make that payment on my be uh, behalf automatically you'll have to recover that amount of money from from me to you that disbursement or that payment you have made on my behalf is an asset because you have to claim you have to recover that amount of money from from me so therefore these are basically some of uh, uh, the terms uh, we're going to come across basically during the or during the preparation of what of uh, these uh, financial statements of the professional firms. Now, what you have said is that uh, a professional firm, just like any other business organization, uh, has to prepare financial statements or must prepare financial statements at the end of the year. Now, which are those uh, financial statements uh, uh, prepared by a professional firm? So we can say that uh, a professional firm uh, a professional uh, firm, uh, firm 
uh, prepares uh, prepares uh, the following the the following uh, financial statement the following financial statement so we have two uh, financial statements which are prepared by professional firms one we have uh, the income statement in other terms we can also refer to this as a statement of uh, profit or loss statement of uh, profit or loss and number two we have uh, the statement of a financial a position, statement of a financial position. This one is abbreviated as OFP. So these are the two uh, financial statements uh, which any professional firm uh, we need to prepare at the end of the year in order to ascertain its performance and also financial uh, position and also financial position. So just give me a minute, please. Just a minute, a minute. Okay, so uh, what you have said is that uh, a professional firm basically prepare these uh, two, two financial statements, income statement and uh, the statement of uh, financial position. Maybe we can start by looking on what is an income statement, why is it prepared, and what is included uh, or taken into account uh, during the preparation of uh, the income uh, statement. So we have uh, number one, a income statement. Now, an income statement, generally we know that uh, this is uh, prepared. This one is uh, prepared to do what? To ascertain, to ascertain the performance, to ascertain the performance, the performance of a professional firm, the performance of a professional a firm. Basically, when preparing fees, uh, we prepare it to determine whether a professional firm operated at a profit or at a loss. Operated at a profit or at a loss during a certain financial year. Now, in ascertaining the profit or loss uh, of a certain financial year, uh, we compare the incomes with the expenses. We compare the incomes with what? With the expenses. And therefore, in terms of how we uh, prepare uh, this income statement. And remember, you have seen that the income statement is also known as the statement of uh, a financial good, a statement of, uh, sorry, statement of profit or loss. So to prepare this, we always start with the incomes. We always start with the incomes here. So generally we should have two columns here. So the format which we follow here is known as a vertical format, a vertical format. Eh? Is this something you know from, um, definitely, you know you have done a unit called account, financial account or accounting somewhere. So we always start with the incomes. Now, the main source of an income to, a pro, to any professional firm, we have said is the, the fees, the fees uh, which is charged. In other terms, you have said that this can also be referred to as the cost in CAD. Remember, we have said that if you have an accounting firm and you are providing, you have provided some services to your clients, like tax services, bookkeeping services, you incur some cost. The cost with which, which you incur, you are supposed to recover it from your client. So basically, that is equivalent to the fees charged or is, is basically an, uh, an income to your uh, firm. So therefore, we have the fees charged or the cost in CAD. And then to this, there is something else here we, we come and we add, and that is uh, something called the closing work in progress. Closing work in progress. Remember, you have said that closing work in progress, this is the work which has already been started, but when the year is coming to an end, it has not been completed. So meaning that because that work has not been completed, uh, the client has not paid you. The client has not paid you. And because you have partially uh, provided uh, the services you are supposed to be paid when the year was uh, coming to an end, but you had uh, not received that amount of money. So therefore, this closing work in progress is like a, is an income, and during the current financial year, 
earned during the current financial year, but the cash has not been received. The cash has not been received. So it is, it is basically like, it is like a, an accrued income. Accrued income. What is an accrued income? Accrued income is an income you have earned, but you have not been paid that amount of money. You have not received that amount of money because it was supposed to be part of this. The amount has not been received. So what you need to do, you add it there. Crossing work in progress, we add it there. And then we less uh, something called the opening. The opening work in progress. Opening work in progress, that one we less it there. Uh, in some questions, uh, this work in progress can also be known as, can, can be referred to as cases in progress. Cases in progress. There are some questions you can be given something known as cases in uh, progress. Cases in progress is the same with the work in progress. So therefore, we less the opening work in progress. Remember in accounting, the rule uh, the, in accounting, any figure which is a deduction, the rule is that that figure uh, is recorded inside the bracket, meaning that is what? It is uh, a negative. So basically what we have here is the net uh, fees uh, charged. The net fees charged. And then now to this, what do we do? We add any other income, any other income any other income, e.g., e.g., something like what? <clears throat> something like uh, investment income. Something like uh, investment, investment income, investment income. We come and we add it there. So a professional firm may have uh, invested in shares. So if it has undertaken such investment, it is to receive some dividend and so on. So you add that now to the net fees uh, charge. So what you get there is uh, the total incomes. Now to the total incomes, what do we do? Because we want to know the profit or the loss. So to that total income, we proceed and we do what? We less the expenses. We less the expenses. We less the expenses. So to that, what we do, we come and we less the expenses. So basically the expenses uh, which we deduct here are the normal expenses, things like uh, depreciation on property, plant and equipment. Property, plant and equipment, these are, uh, these are tangible and current assets. So a professional firm, like if today you have a, an accounting firm, you may be having an office, in your office you have furnitures, you may also be having some, a small library for research and so on. So those books, those furnitures uh, definitely will be losing some value. That loss of value, that loss of value uh, of uh, those assets, we refer to it as what? Depreciation. So definitely we also know that uh, uh, a professional firm may also be using stationaries. We also be doing some printing. So we have printing and stationery. Uh, we also have maybe staff salaries, <coughs> uh, staff work, uh, salaries. You may also be paying rent and so on. So we take into account all these particular expenses uh, plus any other expense uh, which you may be given. And we deduct that now from our total income so the difference the difference here uh, if you get a positive figure is a profit if you get a negative figure is a loss uh, forward is a loss for the year is a loss forward for the year so that basically how we prepare an income statement or a statement of uh, a profit or loss which you have seen is uh, prepared to do what to ascertain the performance the performance of a professional uh, firm. So having prepared that, having prepared that, we finally, or basically finally a professional firm, uh, we need to prepare what is far as a, a statement of financial position, a statement of uh, financial uh, position, Statement of uh, financial positions, SOFP. Statement of financial position. Now, a statement of financial position, this one is uh, prepared now to 
uh, to do what to show the financial position of uh, financial position of a professional firm. Uh, basically, this one is prepared to show the asset, the liabilities, and the capital of a professional firm as at the end of the year. As at the end of what? As at the end of the year. So therefore. Uh, this is prepared. This is uh, prepared. Prepared to do what? To show the financial financial position of a professional firm of a professional uh, firm. On the other hand. A statement of financial position is prepared based on something known as accounting equation. It is prepared based on something known as what? Accounting equation. So we can say it is uh, prepared based on the accounting equation, based on a accounting equation. So definitely this is something you also covered, a accounting equation what does the accounting equation state or what is the accounting equation and accounting equation states that if you take the assets uh, abbreviated by capital a asset are equal to capital plus what uh, plus liabilities plus what liabilities so therefore a statement of financial position uh, a statement of financial position is prepared uh, based on the accounting what? Based on the accounting question. You also have to remember from what you covered in the lower level that uh, assets generally are classified into two. We have the non-current assets. Uh, we also have a uh, uh, current asset. And then we have uh, all the same case with the liabilities. Liabilities are also classified into two. Uh, we have a uh, current liabilities and the non-current liabilities. Now, how do we prepare uh, this statement of financial position? How do we prepare the statement of uh, financial position? So this one, we abbreviated using SOFP, the statement of financial position. Always we start with the, the non-current asset. Non-current asset generally these are long-term assets. Uh, for example, maybe property, plant, and equipment. Uh, property, plant, and equipment. Remember, we have said that uh, property, plant, and equipment, these are tangible non-current asset. Tangible non-current asset. Things like what? Things like uh, furniture. Uh, things like maybe uh, library books and so on. Uh, then after recording the non-current asset, we proceed and record the current what? <laughs> current asset. Now, current asset, this one, may include things like uh, cash or basically bank balance. In most of the cases for cash or bank balance will be given to items for, as far as the professional firms are concerned, you'll be given the bank balance in the office account because if you operate a professional firm, mostly these apply to law firms. They, ordinarily operate to bank account. One the bank account is for the firm itself, for the professional firm itself. And the other one is uh, for holding any money belonging to the client. Any money belonging to the client. Any money belonging to the client should not be, should not be held in the same account uh, without used in holding the money belonging to what? To the professional firm. So therefore, in most of the cases, will be given the cash or bank balance in the office uh, account and also in the current account. In the current account, you come and record both of them here. Both of them here. Another item <coughs> uh, which we also include here is uh, something I've explained known as disbursement disbursement on current behalf, disbursement this on a current behalf on a current behalf. We have seen that disbursement on current behalf 
this is any payment <coughs> uh, which is made by a professional firm. A payment by a professional firm on behalf of the client, on behalf of the client. Like assuming a uh, RO firm uh, has made some payment on behalf of the client. We have said that amount will be recovered from the client. And therefore to the a professional firm, to the raw firm, that money which will be recovered from the client is an asset. If I'm to recover some money from you, to me, that is an asset. That is an asset. Yes, so we have disbursement on behalf of the, of the client. We also have uh, other items of uh, current assets, things like what? Things like uh, the receivables. The receivables is uh, the amount of money which is yet uh, to be paid by the current, which is yet to be paid by the current and so on. So therefore, once you have recorded a non-current asset, current asset, you get the total, the total asset, and then double, uh, double add right that. Remember, following the accounting equation, then from there, go ahead and record capital. Capital, we record capital here. And then to this, the number of, uh, or basically the number of items we uh, adjust uh, to our capital. One of it is drawings. You have to remember that drawings, this refers to any cash or to money, for example, which is taken by, by the partners in this professional firm. If it is uh, maybe uh, an auditing firm, uh, a raw firm, the partners, the owners may have taken some cash for their personal use. So that is known as drawings. We, refer, we deduct that from capital. And then from there, uh, from, the, from the income statement, the, the net profit uh, for the year should be added here. But if there was, there was a loss during the year, that loss we less it there. We less it there. Whatever you get here is the net capital at the end of the year. So after record, uh, recording capital and adjusting it with those items, we proceed and I call liabilities. Liabilities, we uh, classify them into two. We start with the non-current liabilities. Non-current uh, liabilities. Non-current liabilities in most of the cases, this may include something like a bank loan, a bank uh, loan, any bank loan we record it here, and then finally we record the current liabilities. Current liabilities, this include things like what? Include things like the trade payables. This is the amount of money uh, which is owed to the suppliers, which is owed to the suppliers. A professional firm may be owing a suppliers of maybe things like stationary, some amount of money. Uh, we also have what else here? There is also something else. Uh, we include here specifically in professional firms, and that is something called money held on client behalf. Money held on client behalf. So basically, this is any amount of money uh, which is held by a professional firm and uh, money belonging to the client. Money belonging to the to the current equity. <laughs> these uh, a price in law firms apply in law firms, a law firm. So a law firm, uh, which for example, had, uh, had uh, was representing a client in a court of law. So that law firm may have uh, won that uh, case. And therefore there are some uh, damages or maybe there was an, some amount of money which was received by that uh, law firm uh, on behalf of the client. So in most of the cases that money is paid now to the law firm and then law firm will uh, deduct its charges and then the balance be remitted to the, to the client. So therefore, any amount of money which is held on behalf of the client, this is a liability. This money do not belong to the professional firm. Uh, basically, uh, it belongs to the client. So we record it here. So those are basically various items of uh, liabilities. And then from there, we add all these net capital plus liabilities, whatever you get here, is the total capital and what and 
liabilities, total capital and what liabilities. And uh, whatever you get here is the total capital and liabilities as per the our accounting equation must always be equal to the total asset because you have said total asset uh, should always be equal to the total capital and what and liabilities yes so therefore this is uh, <clears throat> how we prepare the financial statements uh, of a professional firm of a professional word a uh, firm okay let me uh, also welcome you uh, welcome those who are uh, those who are joining those who have just joined remember this is uh, our first class for financial statement and uh, analysis i think we have started with the uh, topic number one which is a uh, very simple topic, and the topic is to do with the accounting for professional work uh, firms. And uh, I think uh, what you have said is that professional firms are those uh, firms offering professional service to their clients. We have said by the end of the day, they prepare what financial statement. The financial statements uh, which are prepared include the income statement and also the statement of uh, financial work uh, position, statement of financial uh, position. Okay, so I think uh, we can proceed. We look on an illustration because I think uh, with an illustration, we'll be able to understand the topic uh, better or basically how we pre present these, uh, these what? These uh, financial statements of a professional firm. We have two questions on this uh, from our past papers. From the past papers, There is a question I've shared uh, or the paper uh, I've shared in the class was up group there. I hope uh, you have seen it. The paper for August 2022. So that paper is already in the class uh, was up group. I think you can uh, open that, uh, that word, that uh, paper. So there are two questions. First of all, we have a question for November 2018. Although the two questions are almost the same, they're almost the same. So we will do one and then uh, I give the other as an assignment because the two questions are just the same. So this is uh, for November 2018, question uh, 5B. And then we have the other one, which is uh, the paper I've shared in the class was up group. That is a question I want us to tackle. Uh, August of uh, 2022. August of uh, 2022, and that is a uh, question number what? <clears throat> This is a question number 4B. Question number 4B of, although I'm saying the two questions are almost the same, are almost the same. So let's just uh, do this one. And then uh, the other one, you'll take it as an assignment. Yes, so open this uh, paper here or not. Yes, paper that paper for August, 2022. And specifically go to that uh, uh, question, that question for, August, that is question number four, uh, B. So equally for those uh, who are joining, uh, who have joined it, uh, if you go to the class WhatsApp group, I've shared a number of uh, items there. I've shared the course outline, uh, which you have said you need to print and uh, basically have it in, uh, in your file, just have a small uh, file there a small uh, spring time. I've also shared a link for downloading the past papers. Make sure you have the past papers with you. So now moving forward, I'm not be sharing the questions in the class was up. It's upon you now to have those particular questions because I've shared the link there. Two, I've shared the, the notes on the topic you have just uh, discussed. Make sure you have the notes with you. 
Maybe you can print them if you feel they're not that clear after being printed. Maybe you can just write them in your book because they are, the notes are not too, <laughs> the, the, the notes will not be too, uh, or basically like the notes I've shared, they are like two pages. So maybe you can just uh, transfer them in your word, in your book. Sasa? Yes. So then I've said like the topic, if you check on the topic, which you are covering here, I think is uh, one of the subtopic in topic three. Uh, because what I've said is that uh, those topics in uh, those topics uh, for financial reporting and analysis, <coughs> they are independent. Uh, no topic which uh, depend or basically all those topics are independent. Basically, what that means is that uh, you, for you to tackle any topic, you don't need to cover another topic maybe before. All the topics are independent. They are not dependent. It's not like financial management, whereby maybe you need to do time value of money before you go to the other word topic. That is not the case with the financial reporting. That's why I've said uh, we will we will be tackling, we will be picking any topic. We will be picking those subtopics in any particular order. Yes. So let's go to this question here. August 2022. Uh, question number four uh, B. So the question leads, we go through the question, we see what we are all told. We see what we are told here. Yes, so the question leads. <coughs> S and M are advocates operating under the name SM Advocates. The firm's uh, trial balance for the year ended 30 June 2022 is as shown below. So first of all, you're given the cost charge to the current. Remember you have said that this cost charged to the current is the same with the, or is also known as the fees charged to the current. So this is an income. So then from there we have work in progress at the start of the year, we have the current for money. Okay, that was supposed to be money held on behalf of the current, which you have said is a liability. We have creditors, we have receivables, office expenses, furniture fittings and library books, cash at bank uh, in current account, office account. And then we have uh, what we have a, a postage, telephone and internet bills. Then we have printing and stationery rent and lease, uh, salaries for staff, drawings, disbursement on uh, behalf of current, and then we have capital. Then from there, we have some additional information. Number one, you're told it is estimated that uh, debt amounting to 16.5 are uncorrectable and should be written off, should be written off. So if you're told debt are uncorrectable, it means that uh, this amount of money which is a debt. A debt is basically the amount of money this professional firm is uh, uh, is demanding from its customers or from its clients. So we are told 16.5 is uh, uh, deemed to be uncorrectable. It will not be recovered. So therefore it should be written off. And number two, we are told the precision should be provided at the rate of 20% per annum on books, on book value of uh, furniture fittings and library books three the uncompleted work. This is now the work in progress at the end of the year was uh, valued at 70.5 million. So from that information, what you're required to do one is we prepare the statement of uh, a profit or loss for the year which ended 30th uh, June, 2022. And two, a statement of financial position as at 30th June of 2022. 2022. So let's uh, prepare that, but uh, even before you prepare that, there is something maybe uh, important I can mention. What you're given in a uh, paragraph number two, paragraph number two, not paragraph two, but paragraph one is uh, what we part is a trial balance. A trial balance. A trial balance, you have to remember that this is a list of all balances, which it means after the books of accounts have been balanced. Anytime you're given a trial balance, a trial balance generally do have uh, three columns, as you can see. We have the details column, the details column, 
then we have other two columns. The first column we say is a, the first column is the debit column, and the other column is a credit column. Now, it is also important, and this is something you covered in the lower level, this is something you already know because uh, you prepared the ledger account based on the rule of double entry. There is an acronym uh, which we use here. Uh, the acronym is DIRA, DIRA, uh, D stands for drawings, E stands for expenses, and A stands for assets. Now, all these items in the tra balance, in the tra balance, all these items, they have a debit balance. Uh, drawings, expenses, asset, always they will be on the first column there, on the first column. No single time you'll be given drawings, expenses, or asset on the credit side. It's very, very important. So therefore, if you are uh, given a tra balance, you have to look for assets, there is no single time you'll go and pick an asset on the credit side or a figure for asset being given on the credit side. No single time you will be given an item of expense on the credit side. So it's quite important for you to know that. The other uh, three uh, uh, L here uh, uh, stand for what? Stand for liabilities. <clears throat> this one E stand for equity, which is the same with the capital. Capital is also known as equity. And R stand for revenue. Revenue is uh, all ad incomes. Now, all these items, liabilities, expenses, revenue, all these, they have a credit balance in the tra balance. So liabilities, capital, revenue, all of them, they have a credit balance. No single time you will be given an item of the liability on the debit side. No time you will be given an item of income on the, on the debit side and so on. So therefore it is important for you to note that because for instance, if you have to prepare the income statement, you need to know what are the expenses. All the expenses, you get them on the debit side of the tra balance. All incomes, you get them on the credit side. All assets on the debit side. All liabilities on the credit what? side. That is quite important. This is something uh, you need to know. This is just a, a reminder of what you covered in the lower what level. So I think having that, we can now go back to our question. We start with uh, what is required in uh, Roman one of the question, and that is uh, the statement of profit or loss. Now, for us to prepare that, automatically we need to have the title, <coughs> the name of the professional firm, as per the first paragraph, is uh, SM Advocates. SM Advocates. Advocates, and what we are preparing here is the statement of a profit or loss, uh, which is uh, for the year, uh, which ended 30th June of uh, 2022, of 2022. Yes, so that is our title there. So having that, then what we need to do, we need to have two columns. We need to have uh, two columns here. And uh, as you can see in the trial balance which you're given, all the figures are in thousand of shillings. So up there in the trial balance, we are told our figures are in thousand of shillings, basically meaning that uh, uh, you know the figures given in the trial balance, the last three zeros are omitted. So how do we prepare this income statement? The income statement is uh, prepared by first of all, taking into account incomes and then deducting what the expenses. So first of all, we take into account incomes and then we <clears throat> deduct expenses. Now, where do we get incomes? Incomes, you go back to the trial balance. You have to remember that all incomes, uh, they have a credit balance. So go to the trial balance on this side. This way you get uh, all the items of what? Of incomes. Now, which incomes do we have? And remember, I've given you a format. Always you have said here, we start with the fees or the cost charged. And then we add the closing work in progress. We less the opening work in progress. We get the net uh, fees charged. And then we add any other income. Then from there we do what? We get we deduct the expenses. So therefore, uh, the first item in the trial balance, <coughs> the first item in the trial balance, we have the cost, the cost uh, charged to 
a client. Remember, you have said this post charge can also be known as a fees charge. This is the first, or basically, this is a, an income. How much is that? It's 750. And I hope you can see, take into account that is an item of income. It is on the credit side of the trial balance. It is on the credit side of what? Of the trial balance. <coughs> then we have, or basically to this, okay, to this we have said we add, first of all, the crossing work in progress. And then we less the opening work in what? In progress. Where do we get? the crossing work in progress. The crossing work in progress always, this will be given as part of the additional information, not part of the trial balance, as part of the additional information. Additional information is what we have after the trial balance. And I think we have that in note number three. Additional information number three, we are told the uncompleted work on that is June 2022 was valued at 70.5. The uncompleted work, that work not yet completed, is what you have referred to as work in progress. And that is June 2022 is at the end of the year. So therefore, the crossing work in progress at the end of the year, <coughs> as per note number three, is 7,500. And remember, our figures are in thousands of shillings. So when taking any figure from the additional information, you have to omit the last three zeros because our figures here are in thousands of shillings. And then to this, we add the opening work in progress work. Opening work in progress, this will always be part of the trial balance. And basically this is the second item, the second item in the trial balance. The second item in the trial balance, I hope you can see that, it is 110,400, it is 110,400. So then what we get here, we refer to it as the net cost, the net cost charge to who? Uh, to current, net cost charge to current. So give me that figure here. Oh, sorry, 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 just a minute. This, this figure here is supposed to be added. This one we add, sorry for that. We add and then we less this one. This is what we less. This is what we less, uh, what we've indicated there. <coughs> Yes, what we get there is the net amount. Once you get the answer, uh, type it in the chat box down there. I'll get it. Type your answer in the chat box. Type your answer. Type your answer in the chat box. I need to get this from each of you. You need to have your calculator compute for, for me that figure. Type it in the chat box. I will be able to see the figure there. Be able to see the figure there. Yes, I'm given 710, 710, 100, 710, 100. So now to this, what we do is we proceed and we add other incomes. We add other income. So where do we get other incomes? Other incomes, we go back to the trial balance. We check on the credit side, whether we have any other items there, which is an income. In the trial balance, which we are provided with there, in the trial balance which you're given there, we check whether we have any other what income. Do we have any other income? The items on the credit side, uh, from the figure of 750, which is up there, the figure we have down there is money held on behalf of the client and creditors. Those are liabilities, those are not incomes. And then down there we have capital. I'm checking the items of the credit side. So meaning that we don't have any other income. We don't have any other income. This professional firm do not have any other income. So we add on basically now our total income here remain, uh, remain what? Remain 7, 10, 100. So these are total incomes. Total incomes. Now to these total incomes, we proceed and we less the expenses. 
let's list the expenses. Let's list the expenses. Now for the expenses, we have said all expenses, they have what? They have a debit balance in the trial balance. So that's where you get now the expenses. But before you like, we, we take the expenses in the in the in the trial balance, it's always advisable you go back to them. You first of all go to the additional information, you check whether uh, there is any item of expense. So in the additional information about your tool, it is estimated that debt amounting to 16.5. And uncorrectable and should be written off. So these are debt which we are told are, are expected will not be corrected and therefore should be written off. So this, in other terms, is what it has bad debt written off. Bad debt written off, if you can be able to remember what you did in the lower level, bad debt written off is an expenditure uh, to a business. It reduces the profit and two, uh, it also reduces the amount of uh, receivables. We are going to treat that as an expense. And then we also deduct it from the amount of receivables. Uh, and specifically, we refer to that as bad debt, bad debt written off. Bad debt written off, how much? Is uh, 16.5. Uh, Remember, you have two columns here. All the expenses, we record them in the first column. OK, so then number two, we also have depreciation. Depreciation is also an expenditure. Depreciation, uh, which you are told will be 20% of the book value of furniture, fittings, and library books. If you go back to the trial balance, uh, which you are provided with, uh, we are given, uh, you'll be able to see something called furniture, fittings, and library books. Furniture, fittings, and library books. And the value for that is 135. So to compute depreciation, we get 20% of 135,000. 20% of 135,000. So this will give us what? It'll give us uh, how much? Is it 27,000? 27,000, 20% 20 of 135. 20% 20 of 135 is 27,000. Are you getting the same? Yes. So that is the other expense. And then from there, we have note number three. Note number three is uh, uncompleted work. I think we have dealt with that, uh, closing work in progress. So mean that in the additional information, we don't have any other expenditure. So what we need to do, we go back to the trial balance. Uh, on which side? On the debit side, that's why we are going to get all the other expenses. So let's check whether we have other expenses in the in what in the trial balance. So, and we only checking the items on the debit side. So up there we have what in progress of 110, 400. That is not an expenditure. Down there we have receivables. Receivables is an asset, is not an expenditure. We also have office expenses. That is a, an expenditure. Office. Office expenses. Now office expenses is how much? is 25,500. Then below that we have furniture fittings and library book that is an asset. Cash at bank for uh, in a current account office account is an asset. And then below that we have <coughs> a postage, uh, which is uh, an expenditure. A postage, <coughs> uh, we have telephone and internet uh, bills. These are expenses, uh, 54,600. Below that, we have uh, printing and stationery. Printing and the stationery is, is still an expenditure. How much is that? 105,000. Then below that, we have rent and debt, still an expenditure. Rent and lease, an expenditure, which is uh, 180,000. And then we also have uh, salaries to staff. Salaries to staff, how much? Two, 16, what? Thousand. Yes, to 16,000. <clears> to <throat> 16,000. And then we have drawings. Drawings is not an expenditure. 
disbursement on current behalf is not an expenditure, but, but the, uh, is this we said actually is an asset. Yes, so meaning that in our case, we don't have any other word expenditure. So what do we need to do? We need to get the total here. Get the total expenses, which now we take to the last column and we deduct that from the total income so that we are certain whether we have a, a profit or loss. So give me the total expenses there. <clears throat> Add all those expenses, you give me the total. Give me the total. Yes, the total expenses I'm given six to uh, six twenty four. Six twenty four. What for? Uh, six hundred. Six hundred. So we less that from our total incomes, and I think uh, yes, here we're going to have a, a net profit. A net profit or basically a profit for the of how much? Of uh, eighty five. 500, it's a 500, 500, yes. So that is uh, the profit forward for the year, profit for the year. That is it that, uh, what was required in Roman one of that question. Let's move to Roman two, <clears throat> we go to Roman two. In Roman two, what are we required to do? We're required to prepare something called the statement of financial position. Statement of financial position, we have said that this one is prepared to show uh, the asset, uh, the liabilities, and also the, the capital of a professional firm at the end of the year. So, but even before we prepare that, what we need to have, we need to have the title. So, SM Advocates, uh, Advocates, this is a statement of uh, financial. A position as at uh, that year of June 2022. That year of June 2022. So I've said when preparing these, uh, we start by recording asset. Basically, asset we have said we classify them into two. We start with the, the non current watch asset. And then later on, we record the, the current asset, the current asset, yes. So let's record the non-current asset first of all. So which non-current asset do we have? <clears throat> which non-current asset do we have here? So remember non-current asset, these are generally the long-term asset, asset which are acquired to help a business in terms of generating revenue and which are expected to last for a period of more than one financial year. Also remember you have said that asset, all assets, they have a debit balance. They have a debit balance. So when checking for the asset, you go back to the trial balance on the debit side, that's where you get your asset. And I think uh, we have uh, the first non-current asset here, which is the uh, furniture, all furniture, uh, fittings, Uh, fittings and uh, library, uh, library what? Library books, library books. Now we're given the value for that is what? Is 135,000, 135,000. So that is not the figure which you are going to record here because this particular uh, asset, furniture, fittings and library books, you have to remember that during the current year, they were depreciated. They were depreciated with an amount of how much? 27,000. So we have to reduce this because depreciation reduces the value of the asset. We deduct that from 135 and that will give us what? It will give us 108,000, 108,000. Yes, so that would we have. Do we have any other than current asset? Now, taking the items on the debit side of the balance, up there I have 
a work in progress at the start that is not an uncurrent asset receivable down there office expenses yeah, which is an expense furniture and fittings we have taken to account cash at bank is a current asset and then what we have there below postage printing rent staff salary all those are the expenses so mean that we don't have any other than current asset so what we need to do is to proceed and record what we record the current the current assets now we have a number of uh, items of our uh, current asset starting from where we have the receivables in the trial balance i hope you can see the receivables the receivables the receivables still there is a an adjustment as far as that is concerned. The figure is 234. But remember what you were told in the addition information number one. Addition number information number one, that it is estimated that debt amounting to 16.5 are uncorrectable. So now we know that receivables, this is the amount of money uh, which is a, a or which this professional firm is basically as a demanding from or uh, is supposed to receive from its clients. So we are told part of it is expected. It, it is uncorrectable, it will not be received. And therefore it has already been written off. So therefore, other than treating this amount which has been written off as an expenditure, we also need to reduce this because we are told uh, 16.5 million uh, out of this is expected will not all, is not uh, all it is expected. Uh, what are we told in note one? We are told is uh, uncorrectable. So we need to reduce this with the amount which is uncorrectable. So and that will give us what? 234,000 minus 16,500. Minus 16,500. <clears throat> that will give us what? It will give us 217,500. Let's try to be chop chop to 17,500. To 17,500 what? 500. Okay, yes. So then uh, from there below receivables, what do we have? We have office expense, uh, which is not an asset. Furniture fittings, we have dealt with that. And then we have cash at bank, but it's still uh, an item of current asset. Cash at bank in the current account, and also in the office account. So we need to record that here. So 74,400 and 167,100. So then below that we have postage is an expenditure, printing, rent, staff salary, all those are expenses. Brewings is not an asset. And remember you said that this will be deducted from capital. And then we have disbursement on behalf of the current. This is an asset. I've said this is a payment uh, made by this uh, law firm on behalf of the current. This money now, this law firm is demanding from who? From its clients. So it's a current asset. So we have disbursement, disbursement on a behalf, on behalf of a client on behalf of the current, which is 36, what? 36,000, 36,000. So I think those are the only items of our asset which we have. So we need to add all this. <clears throat> Actually starting from where we have furniture fittings and library books, so that we get the total. So add all this. Add all that and then you give me the total here, the total asset. The total asset. The total asset I'm given 603,000. 603,000. That I need to get, I say, do you need to give me these answers? I'm only getting answers from. Very few people. Looking at Peter, Samuel, Faith, have I seen your answer? Jacqueline, have I seen your answer? You need to give me these answers. You need to give me these answers. In a Jacqueline, who else is here? 
or Modi, I need to see your answer. I think I've seen some answers from somewhere. Yes, Daniel, equally, you need to give me the answer. Yes, so that I know we are moving together. <clears throat> okay, so that give us a total asset of what? Of, uh, of six or three. Remember, you have said that we prepare the statement of financial position based on the accounting equation, get the total asset, the board rights, and, and then from there, record capital and liabilities. So, me that uh, what else do we record here is uh, capital. So, capital is actually the last item in the trial balance. The last item in the trial balance, which is given as a figure of what? Uh, six, twelve thousand. Now, to this, we have said we less drawings. We less drawings. Do we have drawings? Yes. In the trial balance, the third item from the bottom of the trial balance, we're given drawings of 180,000, which you have said is supposed to be deducted. And then uh, during the current financial year, we, we had what? A profit. This profit, we have said, should be added here. But if during the current financial year there was a loss, a loss, we have said, should be deducted. So we added the profit for there, which is 85. Uh, 500 and then we get now the net amount or the net capital at the end of the year net capital so give me the net capital there so that then we proceed and record liabilities record liabilities how much is uh, the net capital 612 minus 180 plus 85 500. So I'm given a figure of uh, five what? Five seventeen, five hundred, five seventeen, five hundred. Okay. So after doing that, then we proceed like call liabilities. For liabilities, we classify them into two categories. <clears throat> First of all, we have uh, the non-current liabilities. Non-current liabilities, majorly these are uh, all these are long-term liability things like bank loan and so on. Also remember you have said that all items of liabilities, they have a credit balance in the trial balance, a credit balance on the trial balance. So do we have an uncurrent liability here like a bank loan? So on the credit side of the trial balance, we have only the first item we have there, which was an income, the, fees, the cost charge, 750. And then down there we have creditors and uh, money be held on behalf of the current. And down here, we have capital the items on the credit side. So mean that here, or these uh, professional firm do not have a non-current liability. Finally, <coughs> finally, we record current, current what? Current liabilities. Current liabilities, these are basically the, the short-term liabilities, the short-term financial obligations of these a professional firm equally or uh, these items will be on the credit side of the trial balance. So which are those items? <coughs> oh, okay. There is something I think I've omitted here. Sorry for that. Before you move, there is something I omitted here at the current asset. And that is uh, what you have in the additional information number three. Additional information number three, the cruising work in progress. Cruising work in progress. Uh, we need to include that here. Why do we treat this as a, a current asset? Because is because I've said that this is uh, basically uh, the value of the work which has been done during the current financial year. But because the work is not yet completed, the current had not paid. The current had not paid. So basically, we have said that this is uh, equivalent to accrued income. Uh, money for services provided, but because the work has not been completed, the client has not paid, or those clients have not paid. So this money was not yet paid. So to this uh, firm is a current asset. So the cruising work in progress is on uh, the note number three is uh, 7,500. So to this figure, can you add that? To the figure of six, or oh, six, six what? Six or three thousand add seventy five hundred. If we can, that will be seven. 
and five. Is that the correct figure? Yes. Yes, yes. So let's let's record this finally. The the current liabilities. Current liabilities, I think I've said the we get this on the credit side of the tra balance. So, and I think in the tra balance, uh, other than the figure of 750, the first item in the tra balance, below there, we have creditors. A uh, creditor, how much is that? Is uh, 74, 400. And then also below that, we have a grant for money held on their behalf. Or in other terms, you can just refer to that as a, money held on current behalf. Or let's just use the word which is used there, and that is a current money held on their behalf, on their behalf. This is money which is held on current behalf. Uh, to this uh, professional firm is an liability. Is what? Is an liability. Is an liability. Do we have anything else? I don't think so. I don't think so. So what we need to do here is to get the total. We get the total. Total capital and uh, liabilities. So the total capital liabilities, we need to add all this, starting from net capital, this, that, that. So add all that, you see whether it will give us the same figure as we have there. So what are you getting? So I'm told the, the total is 760, that is 673, 500. Is that what you're getting? Is that what you're getting? Yes, yes, yes. So basically that is it that uh, what was required as far as that uh, particular question is uh, concerned. A uh, presentation or preparation of a professional firm. This is a uh, very simple, a very simple and also a quite straightforward topic. So therefore what you'll do, there is uh, the other question there for November. 2018, question number 5B. So this question, you do it as an assignment. I don't think we will come back to that topic because in fact, this question is just the same. Just the same with the, what you have done here. It's just the same, it's just the, the same. In fact, some of the figures are almost the same. Yes, so make sure you do that uh, particular question. And uh, once we meet in our next uh, class, in our next class, I think uh, we will proceed to a different topic, to a different word, a uh, topic. So therefore for today, unless maybe there is a very quick uh, question, I want us to stop at that particular point. Any question? Is there a format of presenting our theory answers? Theory answers, which theory answers? Amond. A format of presenting our theory answers. Okay. Theory answers, which are the theory answers are you talking about? Amond. I can't get your question. Okay. So I think uh, for today, let's stop at that point. Uh, see you uh, next week for our next uh, class. Otherwise, have a, a nice evening.